Hey guys, welcome to another Internet Mexican show and yet another Mexican history video. Now before we move on to our topic for this video, I just want to make a quick reminder for you guys and that's um, to remember that history is not black and white. There's tons of variables that go into these stories and um, oftentimes the narrative of the stories uh, will change depending on who's giving you the information, where that information came from, and the understanding of that information from the person who's relaying it to you. For instance, such as myself, but also uh, the sources that I'm getting my information from, which I always put in the videos. You can go look at this yourself. That's why I always say, even though if you're watching these videos and you enjoy learning Mexican history and you enjoy listening to me talk about it, I, I just want to encourage you to go out there and actually read the, the stories for yourselves so you can get sort of your own understanding of the topics that we're talking about. And the reason that I, that I mentioned that is because today we're going to be talking about a, a person in Mexican history, a specific individual who's rather complex and the view of this person changes depending on who you ask. So yeah, let's keep that in mind and let's go on and let's start talking about who we're going to talk about today. And now the last two videos I've made, the one on Escuadrón 201 and the one on Los Niños Héroes, have been about groups of people in Mexican history, right? One of them was a, a group of Mexican, of Mexican cadets in um, Mexico's military academy during the Mexican-American War. And the other one was a group of Mexican soldiers, or actually airmen, who went over to fight in the Philippines during World War II. But this time, we're not talking about groups of people. We're talking about one person. Matter of fact, this woman is actually probably one of the most important women in Mexican history. And the person we're talking about to today is Doña Marina, also known as La Malinche. All right, so Marina was a Nahuatl woman from the Gulf Coast of Mexico. Marina's birthday is not known exactly, but it's estimated to be somewhere between 1500 and 1505. Now, there's some dispute specifically as to where she was born. However, um, testaments from her children state that she was born somewhere in Olutla. And by the way, this video is going to have a lot of... Uh, Nahuatl, you know, names, locations, uh, other Mesoamerican native words, tribes and stuff. I'm going to mispronounce, mispronounce it and just bear with me because obviously I don't speak Nahuatl. <laughs> so Marina is also said to have been of noble descent, either being related to rulers of her home city state or her parents being nobility themselves. It's not too clear how she is related to nobility. However, the fact that she is related to nobility is supported by her ability to speak and again, I'm going to butcher this, uh, Tecpilatoli, which is a type of Nahuatl, which is spoken by higher classes and was completely different from the Nahuatl spoken by the commoners. Now, Marina's life was not an easy one. It is believed that around the age of eight years old, she ended up in slavery. Now, whether she was kidnapped or sold is not necessarily agreed upon, although some historians believe that after the death of her father, her mother and stepfather put her or sold her into slavery. As a slave, Marina would be taken across Central America, where she'd be, she would be traded around and trafficked, and thus she would be exposed to different languages of the different Mesoamerican tribes, um, such as Chontal Mayan and Yucatec Mayan. Now, early in the Spanish conquest with the Spanish expedition into Mexico, Mayan and Spanish forces found themselves in conflict, and the conflict actually led to a, a significant defeat on the part of the Mayans. And this resulted in them trying to sue the Spanish for peace, by giving them or offering them uh, gifts of food, gold, but also 20 slave women. And amongst these 20 women that were offered to the Spanish was Doña Marina or La Malinche. And soon after the Spanish received these women, the women were baptized, they were distributed among Cortez's men, uh, where they were served uh, basically as like maids, servants, cooks, and would also uh, be expected to provide sexual services. So let's just, they were sex slaves, let's, let's call it what it is. And although Malinche is known as having been Cortez's interpreter, as well as the mother of his children, she didn't initially serve Cortez. In fact, she was initially given to this man named Alonso Hernandez Puerto Carrero, who was a man serving as one of Cortez's captains at the time. And her, unfortunately, when she was serving under this guy, her linguistic capabilities had not yet been discovered. Malinche's value would later be discovered when Cortez's expedition first encountered Nahuatl-speaking emissaries that were sent by Moctezuma. See, at the time, the person who was serving as interpreter for Cortez was this guy known as Jerónimo de Aguilar. He did speak several Native American languages, however, he did not speak Nahuatl. However, they did happen to notice during this encounter that Marina 
did speak Nahuatl as she was conversing with the Nahuatl emissaries. And as a result of, of this, of them witnessing that she was able to speak with Moctezuma's emissaries, Cortes offered Malinche more than freedom if she would assist him in finding the Aztec leader Moctezuma and helped in communicating with him. After she agreed, she was then taken into the service of Cortes. Her previous master was given a, a new woman in her place. Although Marina was serving as an interpreter for Cortes, it should be noticed that Marina did not actually speak Spanish, at least not initially. So in order to communicate or in order to act as an interpreter, what they had was this sort of interpretation chain where Jerónimo de Aguilar, who spoke Spanish, but also you know other native languages, would take Cortes' words and translate them from Spanish into Yucatec Maya so that uh, Malinche could understand, then Malinche would take the Yucatec Maya and translate it to Nahuatl so that the Nahuatl emissaries would understand. However, this, this chain got more complex as they would meet other tribes that didn't speak um, Nahuatl so that they would require other interpreters. So it would have to go from Jerónimo to Malinche, Malinche to another interpreter who would then you know, tell his people. It's honestly, it's amazing that any communication was accomplished at all. So with Malinche's linguistic gifts, Cortes was able to create alliances with other natives, such as the Tlaxcalans, who initially were hostile towards the Spanish, but thanks to Malinche's ability to communicate and also um, her diplomatic abilities, she was able to broker a deal. This resulted in the Spanish not having to continue on their expedition alone as they were sent with Tlaxcalan reinforcements who marched along with them. This proved incredibly helpful when they got to Cholula, where Malinche is said to have foiled a plot to slaughter the Spanish. Locals were supposedly working alongside an Aztec army to ambush the Spanish, and the plot is said to have been foiled after a Cholulan woman, a noblewoman, approached Malinche and offered her a chance to marry her son if Malinche would switch sides. Now Malinche is said to have gone along with the plan in order to uncover what the Cholulans were planning, and then going on to tell Cortez about this plan. And this event right here where she saved the Spanish is used as an example, one example uh, of how Malinche betrayed her people, the Mesoamericans, in favor of going and helping out the Spanish. However, this, this story, it probably deserves a video of its own as some historians actually question how it actually happened. Some believe that the whole plot to assassinate or kill the Spanish was actually um, a justification used by the Spanish in order to slaughter the Cholulans. But there's there's this whole context that goes with it um, uh, of the Spanish trying to win Tlaxcala in favor by doing this. It probably deserves a video of its own. Really interesting. So there's a lot of variables in history and this is something that you're interested in. You should go check it out. Anyway, let's get back to Doña Marina. So, Doña Marina's linguistic capabilities were instrumental in the conquest of New Spain. As has been said that without her, communication between the Spanish and the natives would have been nearly impossible. In fact, some people have gone on to say that Malinche's linguistic and diplomatic abilities were to the point where one could actually consider her the real conqueror of Mexico. And the reason for this is that she was able to use her linguistic and diplomatic skills to, to, to convince other natives that it would have been foolish to resist the Spanish. Her linguistic skills were also important because she not only knew how to speak the languages of the native tribes that they were encountering, but she she knew how to speak them in the way, like as far as tone, as far as like um, how to come off as having authority. The way that she spoke Nahuatl to Nahuatl audiences was in such a way that it gave the impression of nobility and gave her credibility when perhaps someone like, let's say Aguilar, may not have been able to achieve the same results because simply because he knew how to speak the language doesn't mean he understood all the little nuances of it. Let's move on a little bit forward in time now. So after the fall of Tecnochitlan, which is the Aztec uh, capital, Balinche had a son with Hernán Cortés. This was Martín Cortés, which has some claiming her as the mother of mestizos, as her son is said to have been one of the first mestizos born on Spanish territories. Towards the end of her life, she lived in a house that was constructed for her by Cortes, a few miles actually from the former Aztec capital of Tecnochitlan. From 1524 to 1525, she would assist the Spaniards as an interpreter again as the Spanish attempted to quell the rebellion in Honduras. Eventually, Malinche married a Spanish Hidalgo named Juan Jaramillo, with whom she had a daughter. Malinche passed away about a decade after the conquest of Mexico. So you can see just how important this figure, this one person, was in Mexican history. This one person was so important that 
her linguistic and diplomatic abilities are said to have sped the capture of Mexican territory or of Mexico by the Spanish. It is said that without her, the Spanish would not have been able to conquer the territories as quickly as they did. They wouldn't have been able to make as many allies because they wouldn't have someone who knew how to speak to the people. In fact, Cortes even stated that after God, Malinche was the main reason for his success in the conquest of Mexico. Her role in the conquest of Mexico was such that many records often show her as being referred uh, with the honorific term Doña. That's the reason they call her Doña Marina instead of just Marina. She was highly respected even amongst the Spaniards who had taken her in, received her as a slave. She became highly respected. And amongst the native people which, with, with which they encountered in which allied themselves with, with the Spanish, she was seen as this figure who was if not equal to Cortez, grander than Cortez, even more so important than Cortez. And often to a lot of these people, she was seen as his larger than life, highly respected um, character, this individual. And this is actually a view of her that continued years, years after the conquest of Mexico, years after her death. So as you can see, highly important to, to, to Mexican history. But how is she viewed today? Well, like I mentioned at the start of this video, Depending on who you ask, depending on who's viewing the information, where you get your information from, your view on history might change, it might differ, the narrative might be different. And this is one of those situations, because how is Malinche viewed today? And it really depends. See, some people compare her to Las Soldaderas, who were female soldiers, or female, you know, they were just women who fought alongside men during the Mexican Revolution, oftentimes serving not just as soldiers, but as commanders. And this comparison is made because oftentimes Malinche was seen as not really subservient to Cortez, but as being his equal, marching alongside him, conquering a you know conquering a whole nation alongside Hernán Cortez. Never really his subservient, but always more sort of an equal. And I, and I feel like com that comparison is fair, considering as we've said before that a lot of people consider that without her uh, help. The Spanish conquest of Mexico would not have gone as easily, but that's just one depiction of her, right? This sort of strong woman, this image that's also been uh, adopted by some uh, Mexican feminists. However, as we've said before, many historians agree that without Malinche's involvement, the Spanish conquest of Mexico wouldn't have gone so smoothly because she, you know, she was helping the Spanish. And because of this, she is often seen also by some Mexicans as a traitor. In fact, the words malinchismo or a malinchista are often used to decry Mexicans who partake of or identify with cultures other than their own, or against those who might be seen as preferring ideologies or ideas which could be seen as going contrary to their own people, such as Trump supporters. But although that image exists of her being a traitor, there's also people like Rosario Castellanos who um, made a poem named La Malinche that portrayed her as a victim of her circumstances. And in a way, you can see how that's true because she didn't choose to go into slavery, she was put into slavery. Afterwards, these people who put her into slavery then gifted her to the Spanish. And what loyalty should one hold against the people who enslaved them and treated them like property? Some also have made the leap to say that Malinche's actions in aiding the Spanish was actually a way of her protecting her own people from the Aztecs who were one of the dominant empires in the region. Anyway, that was just a brief, simple view of Malinche, one of Mexico's mo most important women in our history. Now the question that I wanna ask you is what's your opinion of Malinche? Do you believe she was a traitor? Do you believe she represents this image of a strong woman like La Soldaderas? One who is able to hold her own in a male dominated world. What's your opinion on her story? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to either like or dislike this video. And most of all, if you're interested in more Mexican history content, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Um, don't forget to check out our other social media pages like TikTok, where I'm internet Mexican, Twitter, where I'm online Mexican, and Instagram, where I am Internet Mexican Show, not Internet Mexican on there, unfortunately. And if you have any suggestions for other videos, leave it down in the comments. This has been Internet Mexican. 
See you guys next time.